Sa atin pa rin tampok na balita, dapat kasuhan ng katiwalian si Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, dating PhilHealth President Ricardo Morales at anim na iba pang senior officials ng PhilHealth. Ito ang nakasaad sa 58 pahinang Senate Committee Report ukol sa issue ng PhilHealth. Si Mean Corvera sa detalye. Inirekomenda na ng Senado na makasuhan si na Health Secretary Francisco Duco III, dating PhilHealth President Ricardo Morales, at anim na iba pang senior officials ng Philippine Health Insurance Corporation dahil sa katiwalian. Nakapalob ito sa 58 pahin ng committee report na inilabas ng Committee of the Whole ng Senado kaugnay ng ginawang investigasyon sa mga anomalya sa PhilHealth. Kasong paglabag sa anti-graft law, malversation of public funds at paglabag sa Article 220 ng Revised Penal Code ang inirekomendang isang palaban kina Duque at Morales. Sa report ng Senado na wiwili umanong gumawa ng kalokohan, ang mga empleyado at iba pang opisyal ng PhilHealth dahil hinahayaan lang ng liderato nito kabilang nasi ng Morales at Duque. We call on them to conduct a special audit for PhilHealth's finances possibly in the last five to ten years. The committee is likewise seeking the Anti-Money Laundering Council for it to immediately investigate and determine whether the bank accounts of those field health officials and private entities that have been implicated in the malversation of field health funds fall within the category of the so-called suspicious accounts. Kasamang pinakakasuhan si na Arnel De Jesus, Executive Vice President at COO ng PhilHealth, Renato Limshaco Jr., Vice President for Fund Management Sector, Israel Francis Vargas, Vice President for Health Finance Policy Sector. Minanipula umano ng natura mga opisyal ang pondo at iligal na nagpatupad ng interim reimbursement mechanism o nagbigay ng advance payment sa mga ospital at iba pang healthcare institutions na walang COVID-19 patients kabilang na ang dialysis center na Bibron. The IRM has been implemented in the past to facilitate the recovery of affected HCIs to make them operational for members. In 2009, the payment scheme for IRM was implemented for accredited healthcare providers in NCR and Rizal province, province which incurred destruction of facilities and equipment due to Typhoon Ondoy as identified and validated by the corporation's uh, PC number 36 series of 2009. In 2017, the IRM was used to provide substantial aid in rebuilding critically damaged healthcare systems of accredited HCIs affected by armed conflict in Marawi under PC number 2170026. In January 2020, Bill Health claimed that more than a billion pesos was made available to accredited hospitals, primary care facilities, ambulatory surgical clinics, freestanding dialysis centers, and maternity package providers in the aftermath of the Taal eruption. This was based on the on a press release from them. On 20 March 2020, Bill had released PCR number 2020-007 on the implementation of the IRM for the COVID-19 response. Premised on the said circular, COVID-19 related IRM implementation appears questionable following its stated objective and to quote, to ensure continuous access to field health benefits and be able to provide substantial aid to HCIs in rebuilding their critically damaged healthcare system in order to provide continuous provision of healthcare services to all Filipinos adversely affected by fortuitous events. Field health circular number 2020 -0007. What is noteworthy, Mr. President, in these previous IRM versions is the fact that HCI beneficiaries suffered serious infrastructure and recorded damages due to the occurrence of a fortuitous event. Thousands of claim records sustained flood damages that would have taken months to reconstitute. 
The situation demanded emergency payment arrangements to ensure the unimpeded provision of financial risk protection to members. Moreover, as differentiated from PHC 2020-0007, which authorizes PhilHealth to make advance payment to HCI, Sa investigasyon ng Senado, lumita na noong March 20 pa lamang na hindi pa kasagsaga ng COVID-19 pandemic. Nakapagpalabas na ang PhilHealth ng IRM sa may 270 na mga ospital at mga healthcare facilities. Upon the request of the Office of Senator Ping Lacson, the UP owner or the UP Law Center issued a certification that PhilHealth Circular 2020 0007 was filed on June 11, 2020. If we are to consider the effectivity or the effectivity date of IRM based not only from the publication in a newspaper of general circulation, but also on the submission of Bill Health um, Circular 2020007 to owner, this would mean that the IRM effectivity is deemed valid only on 11 June 2020. Thus, we submit that the total IRM releases amounting to 14 billion 38 million 329 pesos and 14 centavos from March 25, the earliest date of the release, until June 9, was deemed illegal and invalid. Lumitaw sa kanilang investigasyon na sa pagtaya ng PhilHealth, umaabot lang sa 3.3 billion ang magagastos sa COVID-19, pero ang budget na inilagay para rito ay 26.8 billion kung saan 14 billion na ang nai-release. Kasong graph at negligence naman sa ilalim ng Article 208, ng revised penal code ang inirekomendang kaso laban kay Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario Jr., Senior Vice President for Legal Sector. Ito dahil sa pagtangging aksyonan ang mga reklamo laban sa mga abusadong ospital at doktor na nakasampa sa kanilang tanggapan. Samantala kasong falsification, fraud, graft at paglabag sa Government Procurement Reform Act ang ipinasasampa laban kina Calixto Gabuya Jr., Acting Senior Manager ng Information Technology Department at Jovita Aragona, Vice President for Information Management Sector. Ang dalawa ay nagsabwatan umano para baguhin ang preso at baguhin ang mga dokumento para magawa ang overpricing ng IT supply ng ahensya. Ang bid price po ng Cisco's 9200 market price at 62,464 each at hindi 320,000 as asserted by PhilHealth, which they claim was the price of Cisco 2960XR in 2016. The bid and contract price should then be the market price of Cisco 9200, which is said to be the only, uh, said to be only 62,464. <clears throat> if ipilit talaga yung Cisco 2960XR, yung binibili nila para ma-justify lang na mas mataas ang presyo. Kahit na totoo, ay yung Cisco, Cisco 9200 na mas mura ang binibili at awarded sa winning bidder. The 258,000 difference is so huge, even if you include the add-ons, like warranty, VAT, and delivery fee, kahit sama mo ba yung overpriced pa rin. If that's the case, may huwag na tayong magbayad ng warranty. Hindi mo ba? Mas mura pala eh, pag bumili na lang ng bago. Kasabay nito, inirekomenda ng Senado ang pagsusumite ng resignation ng lahat ng opisyal ng PhilHealth. Ito'y para magkaroon ng laya ang bagong talagang PhilHealth President na si Dante Geran na mag-investiga at magpatupad ng malawakang balasahan sa ahensya. Kailangan rin niya ang regular reassignment ng mga regional vice president tuwing ikatlong taon at hindi dapat payagan na ma-assign sa isang region ng dalawang beses. Ang mga itatalagang opisyal dapat may sapat na training, edukasyon at kaalaman at dapat may regular na evaluation lalo na sa management assets at overall performance ng ahensya. Our country is in dire straits. Gross domestic products shrunk 16.5% from a year ago. 
according to the National Statistics Agency, the worst reading in a data series going back to 1981. And that is a fact. The pressure on government finances becomes even greater as we try to implement the Universal Health Care Act, which aims to cover all of us. Ill health is in a deep hole as well. How deep we are not certain yet. Unless we discover the real state of ill health finances, we will never know. <clears throat> and that lack of knowledge is something all of us can ill afford to have. Para sa Eagle News, may Ann Corvera, William and Interesting Times.